Hi there, I'm Kate and welcome to Sally Tomato and our YouTube channel where we bring you tutorials to help you achieve professional results in your projects. Today's project is a fun convertible backpack style tote or bag and we'll be using our Sloan pattern. Step by step, I'll show you how to prepare and assemble the front panel, attach foam and strap connectors, then we'll add handles, assemble the exterior tote and lining, and finally assembling the bag itself. You'll discover a concealed zipper pocket in front and slip pockets inside for extra organization. There are four ways to wear or carry your Sloan bag. Use the handles for a tote, then the adjustable webbing straps allow you to wear it as a backpack. Then pull the webbing through and between the back handle to wear over the shoulder, or even adjust the straps to wear as a crossbody bag. This versatile backpack pattern is designed by Renee Jess's mom. The actress, Mia Sara, who played Sloane Peterson in the 1980s movie Ferris Bueller's Day Off, inspired the name for Renee's creation. Be sure to purchase the pattern before beginning your project. The pattern and supplies can be purchased from our website or request them at your local quilt shop. I'm sure you're ready to get started, but remember you can always pause the video so we can sew together. Now's the time to gather your fabrics, open your pattern, and I'll see you at the work table. Before beginning, review the recommended fabrics and helpful notions on the back of the pattern cover and also pattern corrections on our website for any updates. To create the Sloan backpack, you'll need a main fabric, contrast fabric, accent fabric, lining, sew and foam, fusible woven interfacing, one inch wide webbing, and two zippers. You'll also need some hardware. I have rectangle rings, slider buckles, and then the rest of the hardware is optional. A handmade label. You can either use small Chicago screws or small rivets. And then another option is adding a zipper end. From the main fabric, you'll cut one piece A and one piece B. Those are for the exterior back and front. And you may find it helpful to label your pieces as you cut them by marking the name of each piece on the wrong side with a removable pen or chalk. Then onto the contrast fabric, you'll need a piece D. Then the accent fabric, you'll cut one piece E for the exterior base and then four pieces F for the handles. And from the lining fabric, you'll have quite a few pieces to cut. Two piece A's for the interior front and back. You'll cut one pattern piece C for the zipper facing. One piece G for the slip pocket inside the bag a base piece E, and then four pieces H for your recessed zipper, and then you'll have two pocket pieces A and B, and finally from the lining fabric you will cut one piece K, that's the zipper fabric tab, but you could skip that if you decide to do the zipper end hardware. And then from the foam you'll cut two pieces A, to support the exterior of your backpack and then also one piece E for the base and from the interfacing you'll cut one pattern piece C for the zipper facing and then four pieces N for your recessed zipper. Finally from the webbing you'll cut two lengths for your connectors and one long length for your strap. Let's get started by fusing interfacing to coordinating pieces. You're going to first center and fuse piece C interfacing to the wrong side of the coordinating lining fabric piece C for the zipper facing. And then you'll also repeat this same step, centering the interfacing piece N on the lining pieces H for your recessed zippers. And now we can prepare the front panel. With right sides together, align the top edges of the main piece B exterior front and the main piece C zipper facing, and you'll sew together 
along the indented edges of the PC with a quarter inch seam allowance. And you might try reducing your stitch length to 1.5 or 2.0 millimeters, especially at the corners to create a very secure seam. Snip the inner corners of the seam allowance, but be careful, do not cut through the stitches. This is going to help the facing lay smooth and flat and then also trim the seam allowance all the way along the facing edge with an eighth inch wide allowance. Then at an ironing surface, turn and press the facing so the exterior and facing are wrong sides together. And now let's move on to assemble the front zipper pocket. With right sides up and the zipper closed with the pull on the right, pin the edges at the top together. And if you're left-handed, you may want the zipper to close with the pull on the left, just opposite of what I'm doing. Then at the sewing machine, we'll sew along the long edge of the zipper at the top long edge of your pocket piece. Press the pocket piece eye away from the zipper, keeping the zipper tape flat. Positioning piece eye wrong side up and the zipper is right side up. Now with right sides up, center the main exterior piece B over the zipper and piece eye, that's the pocket piece, aligning the top fabric and zipper tape edges. And I'm using pins, but you could certainly use basting tape to hold the layers together. And be sure to check that you've moved the zipper pull inside the indented section. And then we'll head to the sewing machine and top stitch along the indented edge with an eighth inch allowance. With right sides up, center the exterior piece B over the lining piece J, that's the remaining zipper pocket, aligning the top edges. The bottom and the side edges of the pocket pieces A and B should be almost even. Then at the sewing machine, we're going to sew piece J in place along the top edge with a quarter inch seam allowance, starting and stopping at the indented edge. And while I'm at the machine, I'm going to move the right side of the exterior piece out of the way and then sew the pocket pieces together along the right side edge with a quarter inch seam allowance and continue along the bottom and left edge. Or you could certainly stitch the left side first and then do the bottom edge of the pocket very last. And now it's time to add the top contrast. Fold and press the bottom edge of contrast piece D the exterior front to the wrong side and the measurement is indicated in your pattern. Using a removable pen or piece of chalk, turn to the right side and mark a horizontal line above the pressed fold. And then we're going to, with right sides up, position piece D, that's the contrast piece, over the exterior piece B covering the zipper you're going to align the sides so that the height of the unit measures what is indicated in your pattern. And then pin those layers together or use basting tape. Even both will help hold everything very securely. And then we'll go to the machine and top stitch following the marked line on piece D, securing all the layers as well as the zipper tape. Let's move on to attach the foam to the coordinating pieces. With right sides up, align the bottom and side edges of the main fabric piece A, that's the exterior back, and the main contrast piece B for the exterior front, each over one foam piece A. Certainly use basting spray and sewing clips, one or the other as well, to hold the layers together while sewing. We're going to head over to the sewing machine and baste a quarter inch from all the edges and you may find a Teflon foot or a walking foot will help prevent the fabric from shifting in addition to having used the basting spray and sewing clips. 
Repeat the step for the contrast piece E base and the foam piece E and you'll trim the excess foam close to the stitching, being careful not to cut into the stitches. Let's set the front and the base pieces aside for a minute and thread each webbing piece L, that's the strap connector, through one rectangle ring aligning the raw ends. And then at your sewing machine, baste the ends together with a quarter inch allowance. And then back at the work table, with right sides up, position each strap connector in from the sides of your exterior piece A back. Use sewing clips or pins to hold them in place. And then again at the sewing machine, baste the strap connectors to the back with a quarter inch allowance. We're ready to shape and attach the handles. First position a small spool of thread at each end of the accent piece F handle. Trace the outer edge of the spool from edge to edge and then cut along the marked line to round each handle end. And you'll repeat this for each of the handles. Then with wrong sides together, align two accent piece F handles, securing the layers with basting tape, basting spray, or sewing clips. You'll repeat that for the remaining two handle pieces. And then at the machine, top stitch each long edge of both handles with eighth inch allowance. Position each handle end in from the piece A and piece B exterior sides and then down from the top raw edges. And I've marked my placements with pins so I didn't have any markings to erase, but you certainly could use um, removable pen or chalk. And then once your handles are positioned, mark horizontal lines on the handles up from both curved ends. You'll be marking two horizontal lines. And then top stitch following the marked lines to create a casing in each handle end. And another option to add a little strength and stability to the handle end, install a rivet or a small Chicago screw inside the top stitching at each curved handle end. You could also add a handmade label up from the bottom edge and just in from one side. Be sure to watch Jess's video tutorials on our YouTube channel for installing these hardware pieces. We are ready to begin assembling the exterior of the tote. With right sides together, center one long edge of the accent piece E base along the bottom edge of the exterior B front, aligning the raw edges. Then sew together with a 3 8 inch seam allowance, starting and stopping 3 8 inch in from the short sides of the base. Make sure to back stitch at the beginning and end of this seam. And then cut a vertical line up to the last stitch, but do not cut through or past the seam. Press the base piece E away from the front, covering the seam allowance. Then top stitch on piece E, starting and stopping 3 8 inch in from the short ends of piece E. Repeat the steps to attach the opposite long side of the base piece to the exterior back. And be sure to check that the rectangle rings are away from your seam. Now with right sides together, align the top and side edges of the front and back. Then we'll head over to the sewing machine and sew those sides together with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Then we'll press those side seams open. I'm using the Sally Tomato pressing station to easily press the entire seam. With right sides together, match each side seam with the center short edge of the base. Sew together using both a 3 8 inch and a quarter inch seam allowance to create the boxed corners. The extra seam allowance is for reinforcement. 
and make sure to back stitch at both ends of the seams. And when we're finished stitching the corners, leave the assembled exterior wrong side out. We're ready to make and attach the slip pocket. With right sides together, fold the lining piece G, that's the interior slip pocket, in half, meeting the short ends. Align the raw edges and then pin the layers together. At the sewing machine, sew the side and bottom edges with a quarter inch seam allowance. Be sure to leave a three to four inch opening along the bottom edge for turning. As you can see, I've stitched my seams and now we're going to trim the corners, but be careful to not cut through the stitching. Then turn piece G right side out and turn the seam allowances at the opening to the wrong side, creating an even edge along the bottom. You'll press all the edges and then we're going to top stitch the top edge just like I've done here. With right sides up, center piece G, that's your pocket, up from the bottom edge of one lining piece A, your interior, and pin in place and then at the sewing machine top stitch an eighth inch from the sides and the bottom edge. And then we'll put that piece aside and let's move on to prepare the recessed zipper. Press both short ends of each lining piece H, that's for your recessed zipper panels, to the wrong side. Then with right sides together, fold each side of the longer zipper at 90 degree angles and stitch in place. Keep the zipper closed at this point. With right sides together, position the zipper on top of one piece H and align the top long raw edges and the folded edge of the zipper with the folded edge of the piece H. And then you'll want to pin or tape the layers in place. And now with right sides down, layer another piece H on top of the zipper. Align the top long raw edges again, as well as the folded edges, sandwiching the zipper between the two pieces H. Then you'll go to your sewing machine and sew together along the long edge with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Now press both pieces H away from the zipper so they're wrong sides together. And then at the sewing machine, top stitch an eighth inch from the seam and side edges. And you'll repeat the same process to attach the remaining two pieces H to the opposite long side of the zipper. All right, one last step before we can attach the recessed zipper. So if you're using a metal zipper end, add it to the end of the zipper tape following the manufacturer's instructions. If you're using the lining piece K for the zipper tab, I'll detail that in just a minute. But if you've never used the zipper ends, be sure to visit youtube.com backslash Sally Tomato for a detailed video tutorial on how to install this hardware. Okay, I'll, I think I may install the zipper end just in a little bit, but I want to show you how to create the tab using the lining fabric piece K. So with wrong sides together, fold each width side of piece K to the center and give it a nice good press. Then with wrong sides together, fold each length side to the center and another good press. And then lastly, you're going to fold this tab in half, matching the pressed width sides. The tab should measure approximately three quarter inch by one inch. Fold each 
fold the unsewn end of the zipper tape so it measures about three quarters inch wide and then glue or baste the folds in place slide the tab over the end of the zipper so that the zipper is sandwiched between the folds of the fabric tab and then you'll go to your sewing machine and top stitch the tab to the zipper with an eighth inch allowance. All right, with the zipper end finished, it's time to attach the recessed zipper. With right side up, center one long edge of the recessed zipper down from the top edge of one lining piece A, and you can certainly draw a guideline if you wish. You're going to pin the recessed zipper in place and then top stitch along the raw edge with an eighth inch allowance. Next, fold the recessed zipper up and give it a good press along the seam and top stitch again, this time a quarter inch from the seam. That's going to encase or enclose the raw edge. Repeat the same process to attach the opposite long edge of the recessed zipper to the top edge of the remaining lining piece. Then unzip the recessed zipper and we are ready to begin the completion of the lining. Attach lining piece E, the base, to the bottom edges of the lining pieces A, the front and back, following the same steps that you use to assemble the exterior tote, this time using half inch seam allowances and omitting the top stitching. Remember to leave a six or seven inch opening in the long base seam for turning. With right sides together, align the top and side edges of the lining front and back. Begin sewing at the top with a 3 8 inch seam allowance, then gradually increase the allowance to a half inch. Using a wider seam allowance will create a slightly smaller lining, which is going to fit very neatly inside your tote. Then trim the lining seam allowances to a quarter inch wide, except along the turning opening and then do your best to press the seams open. With right sides together, match each side seam with the center short edge of the base. Sew together with a half inch seam allowance to create the boxed corners and make sure to back stitch those seams. And we are ready to move on to assembling the tote. Open the recessed zipper completely and turn your lining right side out and then with right sides together insert the lining into the exterior aligning the top raw edges and side seams. Secure the edges with sewing clips and make certain that the handles are down inside the tote. And then you're going to go to the sewing machine and sew around the top edge with a 3 8 inch allowance. Turn the tote right side out through the opening in the lining. And then smooth the lining down into the tote Roll the lining along the top edge to the inside, pressing it with your fingers, and hold the edges in place with sewing clips. And then you're going to top stitch the top edge with a quarter inch allowance. Be careful to not catch the handles in the top stitching.
Turn the raw edges of the opening in the lining to the wrong side so the folds are even with the seam. And then simply top stitch the opening closed with an eighth inch allowance. And we are ready to add the webbing strap. In order to prevent the raw ends of the webbing piece M, the strap, from unraveling, if you're using nylon web, melt each end of the strap by lightly touching it with a lighter. If you're not comfortable melting the raw ends or you're using cotton webbing like I am, sew over each raw end with a wide zigzag stitch multiple times. And my webbing is very dark so you won't be able to see the stitching. Now thread one end of the strap over the center bar of one slider buckle. Fold the end of the strap about one inch to the underside and then top stitch the strap to itself. Then thread the remaining or opposite end of the strap without the slider buckle through a rectangle ring. Thread the end over the center bar of that slider buckle. And then thread the end of the strap under both back handle casings. Then you're going to thread the end over the center bar of the remaining slider buckle, allowing extra length of the strap over the bar. You'll need that extra length to give you some working room and then bring the end through the remaining rectangle ring. And then finally, thread the strap over the center bar and under the extra length of strap, fold the end of the strap about an inch to the underside, top stitch the end of the strap it to itself, and before you do that final top stitching, check that there are no twists in your strap and you should be finished. Congratulations, your new convertible tote is completed. Your Sloan is ready to go wherever you go. So many different options. Renee and all of us at Sally Tomato would love to see your completed project. Please share a photo using hashtag Sally Tomato and hashtag Sloan Backpack. And be sure to visit our website for more unique and easy to sew patterns along with hardware and supplies. Let us know if you found this tutorial helpful. A thumbs up or a comment is all it takes. Thank you, Renee, for such a versatile tote pattern. And thank you for sewing with me today. Until our next tutorial, have a great making day.